it's Corey back again for the 25th anniversary, the silver anniversary of Cleveland Pride, and I'm here with the man who runs Cleveland Pride, Todd Saparito. Todd, let's talk about your Pride journey, how you went from being closeted, I assume we all were at one point, to coming out to being the president of Cleveland Pride. How did, how did you get here today? Well, I guess I started out uh, married at, with a one-year-old daughter, and uh, my uh, uh, ex-wife and I separated so that I could basically become who I thought I really was. And uh, during that time frame, I actually was really focused on my career, energy, and those things. And while I began getting into the gay lifestyle, it was not really a, a prominent part of my life. And uh, it wasn't until probably 2005 when I had uh, left corporate America and uh, kind of fumbled into organizing gay volleyball in Cleveland. And when I uh, decided to do that, the reason why I did that was because I saw that it was an organization that brought like-minded people together under a common cause, teaching volleyball, but that we could take that group and actually do community service. And it was like an experiment. It was very organic, and the rules were being made up as we went. Uh, we, able, we were able to accomplish in the two and a half years that the Volleyball League uh, came together fundraisers and uh, feeding people and you know, getting monies for HIV medicines and things like that. So I kind of got the bug. I wasn't an activist and even through the Volleyball League I really wasn't out there and then I had an opportunity to get involved with Pride. And I want to say that the uh, attendee level was probably half of what it is today and I had to really start to understand what are the diverse people that are actually coming to the actual festival itself and what's the purpose of it. So I, I kind of learned what Pride was as I was trying to understand how to run it. Uh, the uh, interesting nature of uh, what brought me then to uh, staying with Pride and working with it was that uh, you saw individuals for the very first time come into a campus and really realized that they weren't by themselves. And that there was no one out there that was just the only single person like them. And uh, it became very touching. It became very touching and uh, I, I really stuck with it between then and now. So how do you see Pride evolving from the first Pride you attended to this year's 25th anniversary of Pride? What, what has changed and what have you changed to make Pride uh, more mass appeal, to make it for, for where everyone feels welcome? Well, there's a, there's a team of people that are involved each year. Um, there's a board of directors. And then we structured the organization to bring in uh, younger community people to kind of help them help us learn how to manage and program the event. And the hope through that was to then bring more diversity to the ideas of what would happen at Pride. One of the first things we uh, tried to tackle in, um, I want to say it was 2008, was we wanted to reconnect uh, our generations uh, together because we felt that the story was being lost on what happened back in 1969, the strife of individuals to come out and then to get to where we were this day. So we actually partnered with Oberlin College and then some college students to create the Generations Project. And it was a really interesting um, journey because we really weren't sure how it was going to come out when it was all done, but what ended up getting built was this huge tree that was placed in the center of the actual festival grounds. And the college students uh, walked around the campus and told everybody to write something about something personal for them about pride or something that led up to their coming out. There was probably over 4,000 leaves of all sorts of different colors on this um, tree by the time it was done. It took us probably three weeks to actually take all of those um, leaves down and start to document what was said. And I remember there was a group of probably 10 of us young, young folks and the people who were the directors uh, going through those, all of us around the table in tears. Uh, people were saying goodbye to people that they lost, people that had died, uh, journeys that they had taken, families that they had lost, been ostracized, uh, people had become something different. And it was probably at that moment when we realized that we really could help with some community work actually affect the community through Pride. It didn't have to just be kind of like an annual party and a recognition. Yeah, it needs to be a little bit of both. So between when you started with Cleveland Pride and now, 
looking at the community as a whole, how has pride helped to, and how is pride helping to affect the, the gay community at large? We are trying to define our role, uh, Cleveland Pride, as a, a unique organization that uh, is focused on one thing and not many. So for example, we're not a service organization. We don't uh, uh, do things like our AIDS task force or our center or our uh, commerce. We feel that our job is to actually be in the community, monitor the community, see who are setting trends as up and coming leaders, successful leaders, change agents, which can be someone who is just like our um, uh, Grand Marshal back in uh, 2010, Danny Sparks, a 16 year old who actually affected the way the laws are, are actually changed for teaching and education in Parma. So um, uh, we believe that uh, what we can do and what we have done is to get people involved who will stay involved with pride or go on to actually change things in the community. So what's changed between now and then? We probably have an active core of, I would say, 16 to about 25 young adults who are now actively involved in Cleveland and or have left our state and are actually actual real activists. And through that, uh, our message continues to go on. The festivals themselves, we really have placed a lot of emphasis on remembering that we're, we need to be all inclusive and that we have to remember how our journey started and who actually started our journey for us. I remind people all the time that when you take a look at the Stonewall riots that occurred, it was not gay men and lesbians that started it, it was transgendered and cross-dressers. All the gay men and women showed up the next day and rallied with 10,000, 15,000 people in New York, but it took um, a marginalized group that we have today to start us down the path of getting our own civil rights. So what we think we've done so far with Cleveland Pride today is to actually continue to bring back into the fold and actually recognize those people who started the cause for us. Our continued goal is to continue to find people to work with us who are younger, show them that they can be brave, they can produce an event that actually has meaning to it so that people can actually see how pride helps them identify with themselves and with our community. So how do you see Pride evolving in the near future, the, the coming years when we get past the silver anniversary? What, what is Pride's uh, identity going to be? Well, with hope that laws are passed and that we actually receive um, equal civil rights, and let's just say there are no barriers, that may take a little bit longer than we think, Pride's going to have to evolve into what it really has always been about. Its current focus was just about LGBT rights. It really is all about inclusion and diversity. And I think that uh, people uh, do, not, do not see even today that our biggest role we have is to get people to learn that there are common interests amongst all of us even though we're different. The um, item that brings us together today for our prides happens to be gender orientation or gender expression. Uh, when that is no longer relevant, Prides will, I believe, transition into just acceptance of diversity of all aspects. And that's where I think Prides will go in the future. Todd, what does LGBT Pride mean to you? LGBT, LGBT Pride means to me um, family and love. And it actually is expressed through the journeys that we've taken, uh, the children that we have, the families we hope to be, the environment that we have around us. And it's really taking that step forward, knowing that that person that is here with us today is someone that has the best intention, loves us all, and we love them back. 